Hi, I'm Freya Jeffcott. I'm a researcher at the Centre for the Study of Existential Risk, where I look at outbreak surveillance and response systems. More specifically, I try and understand why sometimes these disease surveillance systems fail to detect large emerging burdens of disease, or sometimes even when they do detect them, nothing really happens. Now, I do this by observing in real time how these systems actually manifest on the ground. So uh, watching in person how an outbreak response unfolds or sometimes doesn't. Uh, from these observations, I create these detailed case studies, which I can then sort of extrapolate from to try and understand the overall effectiveness of these systems and where their weaknesses lie. Uh, this is sometimes facilitated or at least augmented uh, by my intermittent work as a field epidemiologist, so responding to outbreaks, uh, including some of the larger Ebola ones, and by my intermittent policy work with large international health agencies. I, I think I started down this path um, when I became sort of aware of how great the gap was between how we were envisioning these important systems to work and um, what they were actually doing, sort of just the scale of the inadequacy in terms of protecting us against a catastrophic emergency, uh, like public health emergencies, or even just attending to the current burdens of disease. And then I think horror of horrors, I sort of realised that uh, where these weaknesses were coming from were not exclusive to public health. In fact, you can kind of see uh, echoes of the same problem, say, with climate change. You have this imminent catastrophe and uh, we know what we need to do and for some reason it's just not happening. Or even, say, with like uh, famines, with all of these things, it's never been a question of a lack of resources or knowledge. There's something more uh, complex and societally better. And Caesar seemed like a good place to sort of exchange knowledge across catastrophes. I think the other thing that really drew me to Caesar in particular is that it allows for, if not encourages, sort of revolutionary thinking. And I think this is really important because the status quo which kind of brought us here in terms of approaches and thinking is definitely not the thing that's going to get us out. So. My work at CESA is going to be oriented around uh, creating more of these case studies of where you have this sort of emerging burden of disease that hasn't been readily detected or acted upon by the local public health system. I'm planning on trying to get case studies from around the world and covering a bit more of a variety of sort of public health threat. I'm also planning on bringing together uh, public health professionals, again, from a range of sort of institutions and um, countries to get a sense of their case studies um, of events they've seen that have sort of unfolded in this kind of way so that we can not only sort of get a sense of the problem and characterise it properly, but also collectively um, discuss what an effective system might look like and what the steps to see that realised would be. I think it's probably has more to do with the sort of philosophical tradition of existentialism, this sense that um, even if one day humanity just doesn't exist, which realistically one day humanity will no longer exist, um, that it's really important that there's a lot of meaning to be derived from actually fighting for life, for society, for well-being. Um, and I think that's what I get out of this and why I'm drawn towards it. Assuming that my other colleagues have covered the actual existential risk stuff, I will go with La Pesta, so the plague. And again, even if you're not sort of interested in public health so much, uh, it's because this sort of hammers home this message that it, even in the face of sort of catastrophe or almost hopelessness, that there's real importance and meaning in fighting against it, sort of taking arms against these challenges. Uh, that said, if you're interested in public health, I especially global health, I would recommend David Feidler's work on open source anarchy to try and understand some of the challenges to sort of global coordination and Olivia de Sedan's work on phatic norms to really begin to sort of understand how, like just the sort of the interface between these systems and the people that comprise them and the work that sort of gets done by them. I think that that's probably quite a useful text. Um, if you are a public health professional, and especially if you do sort of applied work at any level, anywhere in the world, and you're interested in this project or my case studies, uh, please get in touch. I'd love to hear about your experiences.